Kyron Williams. Kyron Williams, last last night, we got kind of a bomb dropped on us, I would say. Um, and I'm not sure how to act to, how to like how to react about this, right? So Kyron Williams is going to be returning punts. And I think the like the major tone in the fantasy community was like, oh shit, we got to panic. Oh no, Kyron Williams returning punts. But to me, I already had him like further down than most in my rankings. I didn't have Kyron Williams in my top 10, and a lot of people did, right? But to me, the potential of him still being like an all pro running back or finishing top five, that upside is still there. It doesn't go down because he returns punts. So I think there's been a little bit of an overreaction from the fantasy community. And y'all know, like, I'm not a big Kyron guy. But I think what you have to still continue to build in is the, just the risk factor with him. And I think it's just more pronounced. I, I'm not changing Kyron's ranking at all because he's returning punts. That does not change his ranking to me. What it does is it adds in a little bit of extra floor because what's the one thing we know about Kyron Williams? He's injury prone. He's smaller. Like you just got to build that in. And so now when you have a back, they've already talked about, you know, giving some of that workload to their other backs. You hear Sean McVay talk about, we feel guy, we feel comfortable with guys like Blake Horm and Ronnie Rivers to spell Kyron Williams. To me, that still says Kyron's the guy. And I don't expect Blake Horn to be the guy week one, shit by week five even, unless Kyron gets hurt. I think that's the big problem sometimes when we get news like this is the ADP shakes so much off of one tweet or off of one note. And it's like, I think Kyron has the same value. It's the same value for Kyron. It's just, I think the, the risk and the concern should just be noted a little bit more. Like, hey, Kyron still has RB1 potential but there's a chance that he doesn't finish out the season or maybe he seeds touches to Blake Horm as the year goes on. I think the one area that you have to be concerned about if you're a Kyron Williams, uh, if you if you have Kyron Williams on your team, is will he lose the red zone work? Will Blake Horm be the red zone guy, uh, a big bulky back who we saw take in 27 touchdowns this senior season at Michigan? Will Blake Horm be the goal line back? How will Ronnie Rivers work into this equation since Sean McVay decided to name drop him. So I don't think there's much concern if you already had Kyron as like a back-end RB1, high-end RB2, more like high-end RB2. He was like my RB12 or something like that. So I think it's about right because you recognize the upside of where he finished last year in only 12 games, but then you also recognize the injury floor. So I don't think punt returner, what's he going to return? Maybe 10, 15 punts on the whole year? Like, I don't really see a whole lot of, like, risk with him outside of maybe a couple big hits throughout the year. But most of the stuff's probably going to be fair catches, probably going to be a few returns. And most of them, you know what I'm saying, like, if anything, it adds the potential for him to, like, score a touchdown every now and then. So most punt returners don't just get hurt <laughs> just because they're punt returners. Like, we see punt returners go throughout the whole year. I think the bigger concern is – is how much of his workload is going to be affected. And I think I've already touched on that in my ranking. So how do y'all feel about Kyron? Let me know how y'all how feel, man. How y'all feel? How y'all feel, man? I like Kyron Williams. And I think, you know what I'm saying? I think I get, I get on like a little bit of hate. A lot of people think I hate Kyron Williams. And it's not that. It's just I think that the risk, like I don't really like that. I don't like smaller backs being my workload back smaller lower draft capital backs typically typically don't work out that's over the long haul so i don't know maybe i'm tripping but that's where i'm at with kyron russ is the official starter for the steelers brand yeah so the news came out week one starter russell wilson is going to be starting for the uh for the for the steelers i don't really think that that's a big shock but for me, I think that elevates the value of all of this offense. The Steelers' offense is going to be fine. And there's a lot of questions about the Steelers' offense. What does it look like under Russ or if it's Justin Fields? I think Russ can move an offense. And when you have the talent that he's going to have around him with, with Pickens, with Najee, with Jalen Warren in the run game, Jalen Warren's expected to be ready for week one. I trust Arthur Smith to put Russ in good spots. Arthur Smith gets a lot of hate because he did us dirty as like fantasy managers with Kyle Pitts and like Drake London didn't do what he was supposed to do. 
and uh, you know, De- and Bijan, obviously with the Bijan Tyler Algier thing. So like Arthur Smith gets a lot of hate for that, but we've seen him make good fantasy quarterbacks in the past, like at least on a per game basis when they've been able to be healthy. And I think Russ will be fine. Like Russ was a top what 15, 14 quarterback last year. So with this offense, with the weapons, I think George Pickens is going to be a steal now. Like, especially if the Brandon Ayuk trade does not happen, which it doesn't look like it's happening. If Brandon Ayuk does not go to the Steelers, George Pickens is going to go crazy this year. He's going to go crazy. George Pickens might, like, George Pickens is going to go crazy. So I'm all for Russ being the starter. I think he'll play well. I'm expecting Pat Fryermuth to probably creep into the top 12 tight ends, especially with no Ayuk. And then the run game will be fine too. Russ is going to use his legs. I, I like this. The only thing is they play in a pretty tough division defensively. But, yeah, I'm 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 with it. And then why would they change the red zone work for Kyron when he proved he was elite in that role? I get the injury thing, but don't sway me on him only only on AJ. Uh, so, that, so that part of it doesn't sway you. So I think the reason why you go get a Blake Corm is because you want a battering ram. And if you're Sean McVay, it kind of – Sean McVay reminds me a lot of, like, Shanahan, right? These guys are like, no, I dictate how the success goes. Like, I can make any player go, but I want somebody more effective in their role. Reminds me a lot of, like, where Jared Goff, right? He traded Jared Goff for Matt Stafford. And it's like when you have an opportunity to get a player that makes you even more elite with your system and your vision, to me, that's what Sean McVay is doing by getting a Blake Corum. I think he saw the success with Kyron. He's like, yo, if I can get a bigger back to do the same thing we were doing with Kyron, why wouldn't I? And Kyron wasn't like this early round pick. He was a, you know, he was a later pick. So I I don't know that. And like Cam Akers was starting over over Kyron last year until he got hurt. Until he proved he just wasn't good and started, you know what I mean, causing trouble. So I don't know. I am, I'll say this. I don't think Kyron is going to be terrible this year. It just wouldn't shock me if Blake Corum was the guy that was used in the red zone. Could be right. I'm not saying I think you're wrong in this, but I think I think there's a better chance that Blake Horn was drafted to take over red zone work and short yardage work than give Kyron another season of three down work. I think I think they are more concerned with keeping him upright. Is my personal opinion on that. When has McVay ever switched red uh, running backs in the red zone? This is a good question. I don't know that he has. I don't know that he has. Which. I don't know. That's part of the reason I guess maybe I'm down on Kyron because I just assume the minute Blake Corum shows anything, McVay will probably just switch to him in general. Um, that's a very good question. I don't know that he has because most of the time he uses one back. You know, Gurley, we got Darrell Henderson, Cam Akers, but he moves off of running backs very fast. That's, you know, and it's that's a very good question, Isaac, because obviously, like, we don't really see that. But is it a change of philosophy? Is it a belief in a different back? I don't know. It just I know when you draft a guy in the third round, like a, a the, the type of player that Blake Corum is, why wouldn't you get him some work? You know, like where else are you going to use him? So maybe it's just light work. Maybe it's work between the twenties, and we they use Kyron in the red zone. But to me, when you get a a bigger back like Blake Corum, that kind of screams red zone work. It, it just typically does, but. I could be wrong on that. I could be very wrong on that. My gut is that Blake Quorum takes over some of the receiving work, but you make an excellent point because McVay really doesn't switch a whole lot. He don't switch his running backs just for red zone. A lot of times he'll go two drives, one drive, where like Kyron will go two drives and then the next back will go for an entire drive. So I've seen that a lot with McVay where, you know, the lesser guy will come in. Like Ronnie Rivers did that last year where he came in for a drive. Darrell Henderson did that. And, and then there was a couple of games where he started, but he would come in for a drive. So, I could see that, you know, maybe maybe I'm oversetting the uh, the red zone work. So that's a very good point. But that's my gut on it all is that we do see Blake Horm in the red zone. But you make a very valid point there, my man. 